Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who was an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from the buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. It could have been so. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, 
Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. He said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man who followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. He saw the stream and the
they led Jesus away to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple and within three days I will not be within it. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? Why are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What, what further need do you have me of the witnesses? You have heard the blessings for me. What, what do you think? think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you're talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a he began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. Jesus, remember me. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate questioned him again. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, 
Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him. Hail, Hail King, King of the Jews. Jews. And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, If he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, Come down, down now, now from, from the cross, cross that, that we, we may, may see and, and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, Wait let us let see, see if Elijah, Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was evening already, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. So we began this Mass today with a journey, a walk, a procession. That walk does not end. It continues this coming week of Holy Week, where today we hear part of the story, right? So we end at the tomb. But this week continues with the journey that we walk, as we heard today, but ultimately gets us to the empty tomb. When we walk this journey, it's the most important week that we celebrate. You know, for Christmas, we get all kinds of decorations together. We start decorating in October, get everything ready. We decorate the house. We bring out little people and houses and have a waving Santa in the front yard. And but this is the important week because this is why we are Christian. Not because of Christmas, but because the tomb was empty. I invite you this week to come and walk the journey of the three days of the sacred triduum. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday night we gather to commemorate the Lord's Last Supper. The idea of service and the gift of the Eucharist. The washing of feet is a sign of humbleness and service for the other. On Friday, we gather for Stations of the Cross. On Friday night, we do the veneration. We celebrate the veneration of the cross, where we come and offer thanks for the gift of Christ's ultimate sacrifice. And on Saturday night, for three-plus hours, we will gather to walk the journey of salvation through Scripture, and ultimately welcome the newest members into the church through the waters of baptism and the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist. This is the celebration that we should be having this week. And on Sunday, we celebrate, obviously, the Easter resurrection, the tomb that was empty. If you've never walked the three days, please do so. I think that there should be no school on Good Friday. It never was for me growing up. I went to public school. We never had school on Good Friday. I think kids should be here in church, walking those journeys, and it should be a day set aside as something special. If you need a note from me, a doctor's note or whatever, I'll sign something, whatever. It's a powerful, wonderful experience. And people say, oh, but Father, my kids won't stay up that late. Ah, come on. 
Oh, it's too long. They watch Harry Potter movies, which are like four hours long. It's usually the parents that fall asleep and the kids are wide awake. Please come out. It's a powerful, amazing, wonderful opportunity, and the invitation is set before us this week to come out and celebrate the journey that Christ did for us, for our salvation and his ultimate sacrifice of his very life. And let us rise and profess our faith. I Let us offer our prayers before God, our Father. That the successors of the apostles, obedient to the call of Jesus, receive grace to carry his cross humbly in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, may God take them into his care and allow peace to bloom throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those in this assembly, preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation, May the grace of the Holy Spirit fill their lives with abundant blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that those among us facing a crisis of faith find renewed hope in the scriptures, rites, and prayers of Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that Jesus may journey together with us through experiences of loss and sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear for the repose of the soul of John Zervik, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died, may they come to enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for your own intentions, held in the silence of your heart. Heavenly Father, we turn to you as we gather this Holy Week and journey to the ultimate empty tomb, may our hearts be transformed by your abiding presence. May we fully enter into the experience offered before us. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just is to lead right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death was, has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Thank you. 
are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring him, bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so we pray as our Savior taught us our Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we'll always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh, oh, oh. 
Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. We obviously are entering into Holy Week. The schedule is adjusted this week a little bit. We have Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are all at 8 p.m. Stations are at 3 p.m. on Good Friday we have Easter Sunday schedule is a little bit adjusted as well. 7.30 a.m. 
9 a.m., 10.30, there's two masses, one in the church, one in the social hall. Uh, the children's mass is here in the church, 12 p.m. and then 2 p.m. in Espanol. No 5 p.m. Sunday night mass. Someone asked me, what if people come on Sunday night? I said, I don't care, I won't be here, so. <laughs> I can't communicate the schedule any more than we already have, so. Holy Thursday, children's last supper experience is at 5.30 in the FLC. 6, 5.30 on Friday is children's stations. Also in the FLC, we have the food blessing at noon, followed by the Easter egg experience. The blessing of food, uh, the person who blesses the food should get a percentage of the basket that is brought to be blessed. <laughs> That's all at the FLC. Uh, there's white books available in the, for the Easter season are available in the Narthex. Please, one per family. I saw one lady uh, walk out with four of them yesterday. I said, were you kind of a, a busy woman when you were younger years, or what? Um, she goes, yes. So, okay. um, the ministers of caring, please come forward. Please share our Lord with those that are not able to be with us this day, that he be their healing and peace. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for the blessing of God. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Go in peace this Holy Week, knowing that you were there. Thanks be to God.